The Indian cabinet has approved key legislation that seeks to address widespread hunger in the country through food support programs. The government says the national food security bill would provide access to subsidized food to 75 percent of India's rural population and half of those living in urban areas. But as FSRN's Bismillah Galani reports, the proposed law is facing stiff resistance from food activists and the political opposition. Food security was one of the Congress Party's main campaign planks when it sought re-election in 2009. But the proposal faced resistance even from within the government. It was only after months of brainstorming and bargaining with its allies that the Congress Party succeeded in getting the Cabinet's approval of the National Food Security Bill. Harish Rawat is Junior Minister for Agriculture and Food Processing. This is a comprehensive bill. It will cover more than 63% of the total population who will have access to nutritional food at affordable prices. In addition to that, it will also have separate benefit programs for pregnant women, children, disabled, and those who live in destitution. The bill categorizes the proposed beneficiaries into priority and general households. The priority households are people living below the official poverty line, while those belonging to the general category are slightly better off. The priority households are entitled to 7 kilograms of cheap food grains, like wheat, rice and cereals, per person a month, while people from the general category would get just 3 kilograms. The activists say, The government's approach is seriously flawed and won't bring about food security at all. Dharmender is a member of the Right to Food campaign. They are dividing the poor into above poverty line and below poverty line, which is basically wrong. Secondly, the paltry amount they are giving won't feed any of them. The entitlement should be according to the dietary needs of a person. That's why we are demanding that the public distribution system should be universalized. We can have huge quantities of food grains rotting in stores, but giving it to the poor suddenly becomes a burden on our economy. Others say the recommendations of experts weren't heeded, including development economist Jane Drez, a member of the National Advisory Council. The group is a panel of experts and activists that help the government draft the law. The framework for the public distribution system, uh, whereby people uh, get subsidized grain, I feel is quite faulty because it is based on the division of the population in three groups uh, without any clarity on how these three different groups are going to be identified. And I think it's now very well understood that this targeting system is very unreliable and leaves a lot of people out. So it's not suitable for an act which seeks to give people food entitlements as a matter of right. Dress says the law would have an adverse impact on the states that already have a universal public distribution system, or PDS, in place and are catering to a large number of poor. This uh, reimposition of a certain form of targeting, in fact a rather complicated form of targeting with multiple layers, uh, is going to undermine the trend that is existing today in many states, a positive trend towards a more inclusive PDS and a more effective PDS. So I'm quite worried about this uh, centralized straight jacket being imposed on the states at a time when actually many of them are uh, improving and expanding their PDS. The bill is also facing severe criticism from some opposition parties because of the huge financial support it requires. The government would need about 19 billion dollars to fund the bill. Rajender Agrawal of the main opposition Bharatya Janata Party or BJP says the government has no clue where the funds would come from. The elections are approaching and the government is frightened. It desperately needs something to be able to face the electorate. That's what the bill is all about. And it's very unethical of the government. They haven't even given a thought to the financial repercussions, the costs involved. They don't even know what the country's food production capacity is and where they would get the grain from. The government says the bill would be financed by both the central government and the states. The bill is ready to go to the parliament for discussion and a vote. But given the all-round opposition it has evoked, it appears that it still has a long way to go before it turns into law. Bismillah Gilani, Free Speech Radio News, New Delhi.